good morning to you here and good afternoon to those watching in India and elsewhere. Um, I don't know about you, but I got to start my day watching online some presentations from India, an excellent session chaired by uh, my colleague uh, Rohit Sarun, and um, starting the day dressed in my pajamas, getting to hear about cutaneous leishmaniasis, the problems of adolescence with HIV, and also my favorite topic, Orientia Tsutsu Gumushi, something that we don't talk about enough. And what we got to hear about is looking at, at research and the questions that are most uh, troubling our clinicians with our patients and our programs. How do we get access to um, not just doxycycline, which is a very cheap drug, but intravenous doxycycline for those who have severe scrub typhus? How do we think about um, a national program for cutaneous leishmaniasis with actual free access to drugs? And how do we think about, with the patients who are actually coming to our clinics, such as adolescents in, um, in the Myanmar clinic, um, getting treatment for HIV, well, yes, they're turning up at the clinic, but their rates of um, viral uh, uh, detection were actually far higher than adults. So it's not just do they turn up to clinic, but how do we give good care? And not to neglect a fantastic talk also from a non-MSF speaker talking about active case finding in, in TB and something that really there's a lot of evidence about that we should be doing it, but we really neglected. And I urge you to watch that talk later on, which will be available online. I'm going to give a few um, housekeeping notes. So our colleagues in India set the standard high. We kept to time. And I'm going to, that's my job today, is to try and keep us to time. That's going to be a difficult task because we have some fantastic presentations lined up. And we're also going to have questions from you and the interaction with the panelists and the speakers afterwards, but also with our online audience who will be um, given some preference for asking questions as well. So for those of you who are, are Twitter freaks, feel free to follow the, the feed, hashtag MSFSci, um, online, because some of the most interesting discussion is actually happening around the world, where last year we were watched in, in 100 countries at over 2,000 different computer sites. So um, there is a vast uh, network of people interested in the topics that we're talking about today. It's now my great pleasure to introduce um, my boss. Um, actually, the general director from the UK office, uh, Vicky Hawkins, who has worked with MSF m for many years and most recently was based in Myanmar for three years. Thank you, Vicky. <coughs> Thanks, Phil. Um, so I'm very happy to be the one to welcome you here today for what is the 12th scientific day and my second as the general director. Of, the, of MSF in the UK. So welcome to those that are joining online. La yes, for yesterday we had over 2,200 people join in over 90 countries, and I know that we're expecting about the same today. And welcome to those of you here in the audience at the, at the Royal Society of Medicine. It is, of course, rather a momentous day here in the UK, and not only because of a rather decisive and unexpected election result, which had me frantically changing my speaking notes at 7 o'clock this morning, but because it is the scientific day. And in particular, I want to acknowledge the developments to this year's format. On that note, I want to extend a particular welcome to our colleagues in Delhi, so they have been scientific daying since 5.45 this morning, discussing some really fascinating topics, as we just heard from Phil. They'll be joining us for the HIV TB panel first thing this morning, and we will be joining them for their leishmaniasis panel at lunchtime today. So I hope as many of you as possible will take time out from the delicious food that's provided here at the RSM to participate in that Delhi-based session. They've been discussing research from Myanmar to Pakistan. And it's very exciting to be hosting today over two locations and using this as an opportunity to connect with the Indian medical community. I want to extend a particular thanks to those that have been working on the technology that enables us to join up with Delhi today. 
for those of us that work inside MSF, we all know that de the technology is not always on our side, but today it definitely feels like it's working with us, so that's absolutely great. Yesterday, we had a fascinating day on innovation in humanitarian assistance. To name just a few of the stimulating presentations, we heard about mapping of factories in the slums of Dakar, from which patients come to MSF clinics suffering the toxic after effects of their day job. I'm sure there's many people in this room that feel they have quite stressful day jobs, but I don't think there's many of us that can literally say that we are poisoned by them. We heard about paradigm shifts in the application of data, in boreholes, in non-communicable diseases, and in tablet technology. And having just returned from Beirut, where I was meeting with our regional heads of missions, I was particularly galvanized by those technologies that allow us to remotely work with national medics. National medics that are working tirelessly in exhausting conditions, mitigating the effects of a four-year conflict. I, of course, am talking about Syria, the biggest humanitarian crisis of our time. While I was there, I was reminded of last year's keynote speaker, Jennifer Leaning from Harvard University. She confronted us with our inability to reach those people that are stuck in the most dangerous and violent conflicts of our age. She exhorted us to change in order to be able to reach them better. The innovation and technology that we heard about yesterday can help us to do just that. Our keynote speaker today will provide us with similar food for thought. 2014, has been dominated for many of us by the Ebola outbreak. 26,000 people infected, 11,000 people died, 14 of which were MSF's own staff. For MSF, it was our largest ever Ebola response, but it was not enough. Our regular tools failed us in the face of an outbreak of that magnitude. We needed new tools, we needed rapid diagnostic tests, we needed treatment, but above all, we needed vaccines. We have to acknowledge that the efforts to, to produce these were accelerated through an almost unprecedented coalition of academics, science, business, and government, but it was not fast enough. We need a fundamental change to the research and development system. We need a research and development system that provides outcomes for a global public good, one that is adapted to needs of patients, healthcare workers, and governments, and that produces accessible and affordable outcomes. This is a vision that I know MSF shares with our keynote speaker of today, Jeremy Farah from the Wellcome Trust. But before we welcome Jeremy to help us deconstruct and reconstruct the global architecture for R&D, we have many other interesting topics to cover and many other insightful speakers to learn from. They will be introducing us to smaller scale research, but research that is no less impactful on the daily lives of our patients. So without further ado, I would like to hand you over to the first chair for the day, Katerina Kranzer from the LSHTM, who will be leading the panel on HIV and TB.